going on everybody? How are you doing today? Here I am in Los Angeles, California. I'm on Beverly Boulevard, a very famous road here. Goes east-west to the city, right near the Fairfax district. That's nice and quiet. Right near the, um, right near West Hollywood. Beautiful streets all around me. This is Flores Street. Flores Street. Look up there the Hollywood Hills. When you make it, you go up there. That's where you live. Hollywood Hills, Beverly Hills, Holmby Hills. And when you're an up-and-comer, you gotta live in some smaller places, which are still, by any other standard, beautiful. Nice houses. <laughs> now, today I'm gonna be talking about the murder of actress Rebecca Schaefer. Now, you may not know the name, but you probably know the story. I just gonna get away from the loudness for a second. You probably know the story. It's somewhat well known, especially back when it happened because there was a lot of publicity about it. She was a young actress living here in Los Angeles. She was on a successful sitcom called My Sister Sam with Pam Dauber, Mindy from Mork and Mindy. And sadly, Rebecca Schaefer was killed in the doorway of her apartment, an apartment looking house, just one street over by an obsessed fan. An obsessed fan named Robert Bardo. Now I'm gonna get into the story, but I thought while I was here, instead of going right to the house right away, I am gonna be flying to Portland, Oregon, to where Rebecca is laid to rest. She's from Eugene, Oregon. And um, I thought what I would do is, because the morning that he took her life, Robert went for breakfast before he did it. He'd already shown up at her place once, decided to go back, walk around, and had breakfast. There's a place called Jan's at 8424 Beverly Boulevard. And then, just to show you how close it is. I'm gonna get more into the story and tell you more about both of them, especially Rebecca, because quite frankly, Robert uh, Bardo, I don't really care to give much information about him, other than what he did. And, oh, one thing I was reading this morning was in 2007, he's still in prison. He's serving life in prison. Uh, in 2007, he was stabbed 11 times by another inmate. They found two shivs nearby. The inmate said, yeah, I did it. And the inmate was all, already serving time for um, second degree murder, 82 years sentence. You know? I've always said I'd rather, instead of the death penalty, I'd rather see somebody get sentenced to life for violent crimes and get into a cell that gets smaller and smaller and smaller. I think that's a punishment worth in death, especially for brutal, brutal killers. And I always said, though, when it comes to the family, I kind of, you know, it's what, if that happened to my daughter, my wife, my mother, something like that, or anybody. I'm just talking about female in this sense, in this case, have to anybody in my life that I'm close to, a friend, a father, something like that. I may want revenge, or I may want somebody to get it for me. So I can't speak for the Schaefer family, but whoever that inmate is that did that 11 times, did a bad job. Hope he suffered. I do. That's what he did. It's horrific to a woman in the prime of her life is about to have it all. So it is loud, but we're getting close. It should be right around King's Road, I think, yeah? King's Road here. It's 8424. The building still stands, but it's no longer a diner. It should be right around here somewhere. Move it. Kia, coming through. I have a feeling it's gonna be where that yellow uh, awning is. I have just a feeling. We're not just where we at. We're looking for 8424, where the building is. 8366. Oh, it's maybe a bit of a further walk than I thought. So not too much further. It's 8408 now. Maybe it's where Chipotle is now. We're looking for 8424. Used to be called Jans. Now I got a, a little confused in my head because the story is somewhat similar to the murder of Dominique Dunn that I did a couple years ago now murdered by her boyfriend. He worked in a restaurant. I was thinking, oh yeah, this guy Robert Bardo worked in a restaurant. But no, 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 no. 
He was just here having having a quick little breakfast, something to eat before he went off and did what he did. And here it is right here. It is now California or Calif Chicken Cafe. But this used to be called Jan's. Oh, it's Antipoli. They're in the same building sort of thing. This is what the building looks like. This is where he had breakfast. Probably not his last meal as a free man because he did leave California and was caught in Arizona, but significant nonetheless. So we're looking at, let me show you. You see that billboard in the middle that says Wanda Sykes? That's roughly where Sweetser Avenue is. And that's where, if you make it right down there, it's where the house is. And we're gonna walk back there right now. All right, now, prime. Prime of her life, Rebecca Schaefer. She was on the cover of Seventeen magazine, and that's how she was a working actress. She was trying to be, you know, trying to be an actress. She had a small part in Radio Days, a Woody Allen movie, but her part was cut way down. I think she only appears in like one scene. But she was uh, cast from the cover of Seventeen magazine and got the part in My Sister Sam. And that was her big break. To say the least. I mean, in the 80s, Pam Dauber was huge. So her own sitcom, apart from Robin Williams, was a big deal. And to be cast as a supporting player on that is something that not a lot of people get an opportunity to do. Pretty incredible. So originally, uh, Rebecca Schaefer lived with Pam Dauber. But then the show was canceled in April 1988. And she moved to this house that we're going to be going to in a second shortly thereafter. She's in quite a few 80s movies, and she was in one called Scenes from the Class Struggle in Beverly Hills. And apparently it was that scene that made the obsessed fan Robert Bardo just, well, for lack of a better term, go off the deep end. Apparently in the movie, it's been, I think I saw it, but it's been a long time, she appears in bed with another actor, and he was enraged by that. And he said that Rebecca Schaefer should be punished for quote unquote becoming another Hollywood whore. So above Robert Bardo, he was first obsessed with a child actress named Samantha Smith. She died in a plane crash, which I'm very, very sad. Um, then he became obsessed with Rebecca Schaefer. He wrote numerous letters to her, one of which she answered, and I believe she sent him a photo, something like that. In 87, he traveled to Los Angeles here to meet with Schaefer. She didn't know about this meeting, of course. It was all in his head. Warner Brothers security turned him away at the set of My Sister Sam. He returned a month later with a knife. The security guards again prevented him from getting access to the set. He went back home to Tucson, Arizona. And kind of lost. He wasn't so much obsessed with Rebecca anymore. He started being obsessed with Tiffany, Debbie Gibson, Madonna. But then he saw that scene in Scenes from the Class Struggle in Beverly Hills and that set him off. So there's another stalker who killed an actress named Teresa Saldana in 1982, Arthur Richard Jackson. And Bardo had learned that Jackson had used a private investigator to obtain Teresa Saldana's address. So then he paid a private detective in Tucson to find Schaefer's home here in California from the DMV, Department of Motor Vehicles, and his brother helped him get a handgun. Some family, that's what family does for each other, right? And here we are at the street. So this was his third trip to Los Angeles. And he roamed the neighborhood where Rebecca Schaefer lived. And it's right here. This is the streets he was walking up and down. Schaefer was in the apartment, apartment four. It's right there on the left. We're gonna go right close to it, so don't, uh, where I'm not gonna be standing here. She was preparing for an audition for The Godfather Part Three. That would be huge for a young actress, for a young actor, for anyone, The Godfather Three. That is a big deal. She was expecting a script to be delivered, so she answered the door when he rang the doorbell. It was Robert Bardo, not the script. So he showed her a letter and the autograph that she had previously sent him. They had a short conversation. She said, okay, please don't come back here. And then he went to the diner, the one I just showed you. He returned about an hour later. 
rang the bell again she came down she's expecting a script right back in the day there was no ring camera there's nothing like that just buzzed she came down not expecting at all what was about to happen not having a clue this is how i mean you, you we, i've talked about this on another video when celebrities have so much security why do they have so much security this is why examples like this john lennon Teresa saldana rebecca schaefer this is why so when you see celebrities traveling with people with security i mean they have to there's people out there that either want to hurt them or think they're close to them and they're not she answered the door apparently with a cold look on her face is how he described it he pulled out the gun shot her in the chest point-blank range Apparently her last words were why. She was rushed to the emergency room of Cedar sinai Medical Center. She was pronounced dead 30 minutes after her arrival. It was right there in that doorway. Apparently he was caught on Interstate 10 in Tucson. He was running through traffic erratically and immediately confessed to the murder. Marsha Clark from the O.J. Simpson trial, she was the one who prosecuted this case. He was convicted of capital murder, sentenced to life in prison. And now what's interesting is federal law regarding the release of personal information through the DMV was changed because of this. The Driver's Privacy Protection Act came into effect, which prevents the DMV from releasing private addresses. The murder of Rebecca Schaefer also helped pass the first anti-stalking laws. Rebecca was dating a man named Brad Sieberling. He made a movie called Moonlight Mile in 2002, which is about a man's grief after his fiance is murdered, said to be based on Rebecca Schaefer's murder. During the trial, it's interesting that Bardo said that the song Exit by U2, one of my favorite songs by one of my favorite bands, helped influence him. And when the song was played at the trial, he mouthed along to it. People have interpreted that song in many ways. And, you know, like with lyrics by, let's see, Twisted Sister, Ozzy Osbourne, uh, Eminem, U2. People can take lyrics and twist them into whatever they think they are, whatever they want them to be. Exit's a good song and nothing to do with the murder of Rebecca right here. Apartment 4. Told you the story of what happened to Rebecca. We're gonna go pay our respects in Portland, Oregon. So I'm gonna be doing that in a few days. I'm not driving, flying. And continue the story there, although essentially it's where the story ends, but for our family it doesn't end. And it's never going to end. And together, you and I, we're gonna pay our respects to Rebecca Schaefer. Let's go.
so I've made it to Portland, Oregon. I'm here at Ahava Shalom Cemetery, just a little, um, I guess, south of downtown, south of downtown, and made it here to visit Rebecca. Started in Los Angeles, ran in here in Portland, and I'm gonna walk over to her grave. She'll be right over here. And if you've been watching my channel a while, you know that um, I leave a rock or stone at every grave I visit, and this is a Jewish cemetery, which is it is a Jewish tradition. So if you look around, there is actual places atop the graves for rocks specifically, and then some people come out and place them on the headstone as well. There's one there, you see another one over there, a few over there. So yeah, this is very, very interesting. This is uh, a bit of sweet coming here. Where Rebecca should be right around here somewhere. And probably where some of the more, yep, right where all these rocks are, right here. So here we are. Beloved daughter and courageous spirit, Rebecca Lucille Schaefer, November 6th, 1967 to July 18th, 1989. I am so wise to think love will prevail. I am so wise. RLS, 1989. So she wrote that. If you're looking for Rebecca, it's going to come in the front end. It's a very small cemetery. There's that strange water tower type of thing. Go past it, turn left. Uh, walk right here. And there is a pin on find a grave, which will be very, so very easy to find. And lots of people come out here. There's a stone everywhere, all at the top. I've got one to add, of course. Some specific ones, some design ones. One here that says Marie Winton, 2018. I know a Marie Winton. That's interesting, and she lives in Portland. So not only do I know a Marie Winton here in Portland, I know that exact Marie Winton who left that stone, because Marie is right here with me. Hey, huh. how's it going? Marie is, uh, you've seen her on my channel before, one of the first people I ever collaborated with, I mentioned that, and uh, we've met up today, and you were here, so this, that has been here for five years? I can't believe it's still here. Wow. Um, I do a lot of arts and crafts and painting, and so I painted this tile. The other side was black with a red heart, but that has faded, but wow, the other side has my here. signature. It's still here. Let's throw that again. So there it is there. And you can see a couple of rocks have fallen off. We'll place those back. It looks like an old sunflower. Some of these rocks have fallen back. But yeah. So that had a heart on the back? Yeah, it it's was faded. painted black with a red heart. Wow. So you were telling me a little bit about Rebecca. Um, she went to Lincoln High here? Yeah. Recently, um, they tore down the old school and they rebuilt it. So it's not the same location, but I mean, it's still the same school. Right. It's still Lincoln High School. Right. Yeah. But yeah, her parents are, uh, this is where she spent her formative years, right? Portland, Oregon. Beautiful. I love it here. So beautiful. And then we're in a, one, of, one of the more beautiful cemeteries I've ever seen. And it's so well kept, but it's so sweet that they leave, because of all these raised graves, headstones, they leave something like that for five years. You know, fresh flowers over here, but yes, yeah, some of the like, this gentleman here, these could be here for look at the skull mug or skull thing, but yeah, these could be here for how long? Who knows? There she is. Okay, well, Marie, thank you for coming out with me. Thank you for having me, and Rebecca. Uh, Schaefer, she changed a lot. I was saying on my LA, like the mm -hmm. stalking laws, 
how do how people get license addresses from license plates. This is all California, but stalking laws for all of America. So I, you know, when people say someone's death is in vain, is not in vain. I get it, but I think the person that died, it's not really doesn't really help them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, not to be crass, but it's like, well, they had to pay the ultimate price for positive change of course but let's hope I was I probably said it I'm sure I did back in LA it's been a few days in NFL but Robert uh, Bardo who when you did the video you didn't mention his name nope. I think I called him scumbag yep dirtbag scumbag it all fits <laughs> it all fits for this he didn't freak. deserve my no naming of him in my video no well, let's hope wherever well we know where he is I said where he is mm. that hopefully burning nice and toasty did you know that he was uh, stabbed I think it was I think I said 11 times in prison my fellow inmate, 2007, I think I said. Yeah. The inmate was serving eight. I said this already. Yeah, he's, the inmate was serving 82 years for second degree murder. Wow. And two shivs he used on him, homemade shivs, jail made shivs. So, up until 2007, it seems like scumbag was having a difficult time in prison, and I hope that continues. Karma. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hope it continues for him. Uh, but Rebecca, so beautiful, so young, so talented. Rest mm -hmm. in peace, Marie. Thanks for coming along. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> and rest in peace, Rebecca Schaefer. Thanks for watching, everybody. Love you all. Peace out.